Hey guys, Sheena here with Main Home Gardens. It is a chilly Friday afternoon here in Lower Alabama and the sun is shining so I'm excited about that. Still, it's a little too nippy for me to be outside so I thought why not go ahead and start our seeds. Start on our seed starting. Start on our seed starting. So that 10 times fast. We have just a few short months and spring will be upon us. And with that, lots of growing. For me here in um, zone eight, I need to be sure that I get things like eggplant, peppers and tomatoes started fairly early. Not to mention some of our flowering plants that we use for our flower CSA also need to be started about eight weeks before the last frost in order to flower before the set in of the summer heat. Things transition so quickly here. I don't know about where you are, but there is a blur between spring and summer here in zone eight. So today, what I'm going to do is I got my handy dandy seed storage packet for spring and summer sown and planted. And I'm going to go through and I'm going to find eggplants. That's the tray I'm going to be working on today and tomorrow or sometime this weekend I will get to the peppers and next week we will start on um, some of our longer tomatoes like our beef steaks which take a little bit longer to get to harvest so I like to have them ready to go into the high tunnel um, by the 1st of March end of February at the earliest so let's break in here all right so eggplant I did order our standard varieties of eggplants that we usually grow but I also added to that a couple of new ones and one from a new source that I'm really excited about and that is um, Melanated Organics really excited about this particular company um, and this particular eggplant it's just your standard long purple eggplant which seems to do very good I've talked to some other gardeners and friends in the area this one has been prolific for them let's hope that it's prolific for us I will say this we have quite a bit of eggplant that's been dehydrated and frozen from previous season, the previous season, 2021. So I'm not going to be doing as many eggplant this year as I have done in the past for the simple fact that primarily it'll be for our customers and eggplant isn't a huge ask in our area. So just a few. So I have the long purple this Tai Long Green eggplant did very well for us this past year as well. And I'm going to keep it in the rotation. Casper eggplant has been iffy. But when it does good, it does real good. There's a dinosaur in my living room. Okay. And then we also have the Black Beauty eggplant that we're going to do. And finally, our Asian Eggplant Orient Express. So that is one, two, three, four. That is five different varieties of eggplant. And I'm probably going to do about five each. So what I'm going to do is just get you zoomed in on my table and then we're going to talk a little bit about humidity and growing in a humidity dome. Okay, so one of the things that I have learned and as growers, gardeners and farmers, we all have different techniques that we come to learn works best for us. These humidity domes, um, 
have been the very best way for us to start our crops. Um, sometimes I use the 25 count. These pods are bigger in diameter, which means they're really good for things that are going to grow a deeper taproot like the tomato, like a pepper. Um, and it helps prevent me from having to worry about up, plant, up planting or up potting. It makes my life a little bit easier to plant in these bigger uh, pellets. Excuse me. Humidity is very important when it comes to germinating a seed, when it comes to growing plants in general. But you do not have to have a humidity dome in order to grow your seeds. One of the things that I have learned is that my germination rate is exponentially better if I use a humidity dome. Okay, that means I don't have to waste seeds. Nobody likes to waste seeds. Um, just in the mail today came some of our, um, what's this, Oregon sugar snap peas, organic. Seeds are expensive. And if you add the organic factor to it, and it can just, the cost can really get out of control. Nobody wants to waste seeds. So I can decrease my waste personally by using a humidity dome that's going to give my seed the best chances of germination. The other thing is they germinate fairly quickly. I can take, say, a brassica like a collard or cabbage and take that seed and put it in this jiffy greenhouse, mini greenhouse thingy, and plant it the same time same time i plant seeds outdoors and guess what the seeds in this tray are going to germinate especially for brassicas probably four or five days earlier i had this weird phenomena this last time that we did a seed tray which was about two months ago we did some collards and when i tell you those things sprouted in two days it was unbelievable. Now, there is a trick to that. I did take this humidity dome or greenhouse and put it on top of a heat mat as well. So those two combinations were crazy with this, the time for germination. So those are two things that I really, really appreciate. And when you're growing on a commercial scale, that's very important. As quick as you can get your product from seed to harvest is very important. Um, so getting the little seed to germinate and come on out in all its gloriousness is very important. So for you, just keep in mind, these things can get costly, uh, especially in an off season. I've noticed that they have started putting these out earlier in the year than later it used to be that we weren't getting them into the lawn and garden apartments till around say March and by then I'm needing to be putting things into the ground um, but I noticed last year we had them late January or early February I am so tongue-tied today this is just your Jiffy greenhouse 25 count using some water to hydrate the peat pellets and that's what I'm going to do I already have some water here I have lukewarm water just remember the cooler your water these will eventually plump up but it's probably gonna take a quite a bit longer I have some lukewarm water here and this is a gallon but I'm not gonna need all of this Okay, got that in there. The nice thing about this too, I will buy the Jiffy refills because I have several of these trays, uh, beyond several, many <laughs> of these trays that we've collected over the years. This one, uh, we have, they have a 12 count for like the windowsill. There's a 16 count. There's a 72 count, which is what we, have the most of around here um i'll buy the refill pellets online too 
But the nice thing about buying the trays is they come with these handy dandy labels. When you're not buying the full tray, you don't get the labels and then you're stuck trying to make your own. So got a lot of bubbles happening here. I'm going to go ahead and let this get completely um, filled up and then I'll come back. While that's filling, we're going to go ahead and make our plant labels. There's a total of six that come with each pack and I noticed that that is the case whether you get the 25 count or the 72 count pellets. So I'm going to go ahead and get these made. I'm just going to do one for each row. I'm going to do five of each. Okay, that is done. I'm just going to take these and just plop them in. That's what it looks like done. Excuse my handwriting. <laughs> so, how do you choose to start your seeds or do you buy all of yours from the nursery? Do you use soilless mixture for seed start starting? Do you just direct sow everything? There are so many options out there. I mean, starting seeds and starting growing a garden is it's like ordering a drink. <laughs> There's so many different ways you can do it. Now, I have friends that have tried um, this method with the peat pellets and it's not worked for them. I also have friends that <laughs> they don't start anything from seed. Um, everything is either direct sown or then others, they buy most of their, their plants from the nursery. So a word of caution to you. If you are someone that buys things from a nursery, there's nothing wrong with that, especially, especially if you have a trustworthy source, someone who you know you've been dealing with for years and they've been giving you a good product, continue to stick with that. That's hard to come by nowadays. However, there are some pest, invasive pests like aphids, um, some beetles, worms, all of these can be transported from the nursery to your garden. And gardening has enough challenges as it is. We don't want to add anything extra, if you know what I mean. So just do a good inspection of your plants. And um, I have a tendency, even from trustworthy sources, because sometimes it's out of their control even, to not plant the soil plant the plant in the soil that it came in so i will just take the plant and sit it in some water room temperature water i usually do this outside and i'll just let it sit and as it sits the soil that's around the root base is going to loosen and the majority of that soil will fall off then i'll give my plant a good rinse with um, some soapy spray so like a little bit of um, Dr. Bronner's soap in uh, a spray bottle and spray the leaves it stems pretty well rinse it good and then plant and if you do this um, not in the heat of the day obviously it tends to be just fine the plant tends to not go through any more shock than it was going to go through anyway from being transplanted. I've only lost a few plants to that technique and um, it was so random that I just kind of chalk it up to the health of those particular plants but for the most part um, it's done just fine and keep in mind too we seldomly will buy plants from a nursery um, so we've done this technique probably a total of 10 times maybe 12 times the whole time we've been farming so just keep that in mind before you decide to use that technique and maybe in the upcoming season i will get a chance to do a video showing you guys how to do that 
Now, you've already seen me on many occasions plant in these pods because this is this is what I plant in. So right now, you if you've seen our videos, you know I'm just going through and loosening up the pods, the soil, and sometimes the pellet, the little fabric comes over a little bit too far and I'll just cut that like you just saw so yeah the thing about eggplant is it can be a little spotty with germination it benefits from from some bottom heat so this tray will definitely be going under um on top I'm sorry on top of a heat mat in order to aid the humidity dome in doing what we need to do and that is fast and efficient germination so i'm going to go ahead and get these done and i hope that if your zone is um, requiring for you to plant now that you're getting on top of things for us here it never really stops we we never really have a chance to say oh let's just sit on our laurels and and rest a little bit because we're always planting always growing even um in our um, uncovered areas our raised beds we're always planting today we just planted more um pop choy varieties so it's cold now so those are going to grow fairly slow but they're going to grow so um if it will grow we will plant it so we hope that you keep growing thank you for growing with us today planting your seeds getting them started again remember if you're in zone eight you're coming close to the time where you need to be having your eggplant peppers tomatoes all those things need to be started and coming up soon by next month you will need to be starting your broccoli cauliflower anything you're planning on harvesting in the spring that is a brassica will need to be planted just a word of caution to you guys be careful about when you are starting your plants make sure it is based off of the zone that you are growing in take for instance us in zone eight our last frost is usually mid-March, so I'm starting my eggplants and peppers now because we like for them to be about eight weeks before planting them. We also like to start a little bit early because when it comes to seed germination, there can always be failures and we like to have the buffer room in order to correct those failures and start again. Also, some of our starts will not be going into the open field areas or raised beds, but will be going into our high tunnel. So we can even start in there a bit earlier. Thanks for planting with us. Catch you next time. Bye.